We're live. Ok, ok. Vamos a ver. Uh, what's up? Good evening. Well, let me make sure the mic's on. Testing, testing, testing. Yeah, mic's on. Good evening. Uh, we're gonna watch something here. Gonna give it a little bit, a couple of minutes for people to join. Uh, let me just click the link here too. Seasons. Good. All right. We got audio. Audio. That's, that's amazing. Amazing. Apparently there's this video that came out. It came out yesterday, but I saw it tonight randomly when I was looking for the West boys, like updates and stuff. And did you guys know that the defense counsel spoke against the prosecution? It was like a 30 minute video, some in English, some in Spanish. Uh, and I just thought it was kind of interesting. So I figured we'd just jump on and watch it and watch some of the other clips that was on as well that I had. Yeah, twice, twice in a day. I want to get people a minute to join. Hopefully the notifications are going out. Notification gang. This is an election year. And apparently, let me take a look at while we wait. We're going to give a little bit for people to join. I'm on a little bit later than usual. Uh, let me see. West boys. There was a gag order set too, which was interesting. Let me let me pull up this gag order stuff before I watch this because I think the defense felt some type of way because the prosecution got to do a press conference and then they put out this gag order and they felt like they well they didn't get to say anything or speak on what happened or what's going on. I hope I'm not on the VPN. Oh, I'm on the VPN. I didn't mean to be on the VPN. Teresa, hey, how you doing? Thank you for all you do. Great channel. Thank you for stopping by. Appreciate it. <laughs> Get ready for the horrible Spanish translator. Who's that? Who, death me? Not the entire video. I'm going to try to translate, I guess. We're going to watch it. Unless you want me to uh, skip over the Spanish parts. But there was a current county judge on Tuesday issued a gag order in the case of a couple accused of killing t the two adopted grandchildren. The order bars attorneys and their investigators and law enforcement involved in the case of Trezell and Jacqueline from speaking publicly. It also applies to witnesses and court personnel with access to reports filed in the case. Additionally, the judge, Chad Louie, ordered all search warrants and grand jury transcripts sealed. Prosecutors, uh, Prosecutor Eric Smith had requested the gag order and defense lawyers Timothy Hennessy and Alec, what is it? Alecky Torres Stallings joined the motion. <laughs> Somebody said, not you. No, not you. Oh, <laughs> I've done translating before, so it, it wasn't that great. I mean, we we're gonna play it right i didn't see this we're gonna play it i figured we can listen in at least to the english parts my spanish is cringeworthy why didn't they get somebody that speaks spanish then that actually fluently speaks spanish to do it hola como estas yo estoy aquí el abogado representando trezel y uh what's the other guy uh oh jacqueline trezel y jacqueline Hola, gracias. You know those people, right? <laughs> All right, I guess let's start. The defense counsel are in deep waters. They showed a nervous and weak hand. Really? 
Really? All right, let's watch it, man. Let's just chill. Chill, man. Late night. Nine o'clock is late night. Emma, thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate it. Let's check it out here. I was just curious. I was like, oh, I, I didn't know they, they spoke up yesterday. And it's a lot of Spanish too, right? I mean, I was skimming through it. Ooh, The Walking Dead. Binge, you stopped. Why do I only have 200 people? Stop, stop. Let's go. Oh. Maybe it, this is kind of later than normal, so maybe the people are like already in bed or something. Let's see, audience. Vamos para away. Audience. It is kind of late though, huh? Uh, today is Tuesday. Oh yeah, by 10 o'clock it starts falling off. Walking Dead's kind of, it gets lame though. I don't know, season 10 is just such a turn off. Maybe it's the cyber attack, right? They so say we got cyber attacks going on? Or maybe it's me on this damn VPN. I don't know. Blame it on cyber attack. Blame Russia. All right, we'll get started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here today. My name is Tim Hennessy. Mm -hmm. I'm lead counsel for Mr. Trezel West. Uh, associated counsel with me will be Joshua Fleshman. He's not present at this moment. Uh, here with me also is Alexia Torres Stalin. She represents Ms. Jacqueline West. And associated counsel for Ms. Jacqueline West will be uh, Ms. Fatima Rodriguez here present to my left. Um, <clears throat> this will be the only time defense counsel will be addressing the media and making statements about the case until after the trial. We won't be answering any questions here today. We won't be uh, discussing any facts of the case. Um, our clients, uh, we've spoken to them about this. Uh, they're behind this. Uh, they understand our need to getting our side out. Um, last week, our clients, Mr. and Mrs. West, were arraigned on an indictment of five counts, including second-degree murder, and that came as a result of a grand jury convoy. <clears throat> There's been great confusion we've seen uh, about the difference here between a grand jury and a trial jury, and the two of those things cannot be more different. First, the standard of proof is lower for a grand jury. They need to only determine probable cause, which is one of the lowest legal standards our system holds. They also do not require a unanimous vote by the jurors. The prosecution. I was going to say that too. People are saying like nervous vibes. Yeah. And he seems like he's breathing deep. Maybe he's anxious, nervous. I don't know. Also has broad discretion in determining how to proceed and doing so by way of indictment. <clears throat> the grand jury process lacks a crucial and important mm -hmm. role of our criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. And that is the accused and their counsel being present during, <clears throat> yeah. uh, there is no opportunity to cross-examine any witnesses, and it is basically ran by the district attorney. Uh, this is to the detriment of the accused, as evidence of a speculative nature has a way of integrating itself into this most secretive of all legal proceedings. On the other hand, a trial by jury, they must unanimously agree on the issue of guilt or not guilty. And there you have the highest standard of proof, which is, which is beyond a reasonable doubt, and it is a proceeding done in open court. The state's comment and reliance on this we have proved to a grand jury is mere rhetoric. It's used as an insurance to bolster a lopsided indictment. Comments such as this have no place in an actual court of law, where it is 12 individuals who unanimously decide the outcome of this case based on this highest level of burden of proof, which is beyond a reasonable doubt. Statements that have been used by the Kern <laughs> County District Attorney in her press conference tend to invoke a tidal wave of emotion towards finding guilt, whether substantiated or not, and this will taint a local jury pool and could deny our clients a chance at a fair trial. 
It's odd that the office held their press conference, made a series of comments which both mis- and disinformed the public, then the following day came and requested a gag order to stop the defense from having an ability to make similar comments. So that's just what we were talking about. They're, they're pissed off about this gag order thing, and they feel they didn't have their, even though they're doing it now. This action is disingenuous, but may also cause change for a change of venue in the future. This is an election year, and this case is serving as a compass to guide the DA to her path of re-election. However, it is now when <clears throat> the misleads and theater end, and the constitutional protections begin. The safeguards of the accused and the fight to preserve those for Trey Zell and Jacqueline West begin now. And I think. Oh. Thank you, Melissa. Appreciate it. Buenas tardes a todos. Gracias por acompañarnos a nuestra conferencia. Just saying good evening, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining us at the press conference. I'll see how much of this I want to do, the translating thing, because we could skip to the next English part, but we'll see. De prensa conjunta. Primeramente, me gustaría comenzar presentando a los abogados. Timothy Hennessy. Which introducing the lawyers. El abogado principal para Señor West. Joshua F Fleshman, abogado asociado con Señor West. Y yo, Alexia Torres Stallings, abogada principal de la señora Jacqueline Martinez West. So she's for the Jacqueline, I guess, and the other guys are for uh, Giselle. Fatima <coughs> Rodriguez, abogada asociado de la señora West. Esta será, el, esta será la única vez que los abogados defensores se dirigirán a los medios. So she's basically saying the same thing this guy said. This is going to be the last time that they address the media or whatever, because I guess because of the gag order until the trial is over. De comun de comunación hasta después del final de juicio. No, resp no responderemos a ninguna pregunta hoy después de la conferencia. Avocados. No. Tenga Yo, who said, uh, Vic is saying avocados. Instead of saying avocado, avocado. Avocados. <laughs> En cuenta que hemos hablado con nuestros clientes que están al tanto de la conferencia de hoy y tampoco discutiremos ninguno de los hechos relaciones con el caso. Yeah, if she's just repeating what this guy said, then I'll skip to the next English part. Comentarios como estos no okay. tienen. So we're just gonna we're gonna move on. It is kind of funny to listen to, but I, I'm not gonna <laughs> torture you guys. Let's just <laughs> avocado emojis. Let's get to the next part. Discrecional durante el proceso years ocupa tram tu acusionable a evocar un olo de emoción hacia la culpable. Creo que la oficina celebrar. Un conferencia de prensa. Cambio final la test about grand jury. Thank you everyone for being here today. Um, I know you guys can't talk about facts in the case, but can we ask you questions just about what it is that you said, just for further clarification? About grand juries? And yeah, exactly. Day? So um, just for like the common layperson, you know, sure. um, the, can you explain the difference between finding the you know, having probable cause in order to do, uh, have pass an indictment and the beyond a reasonable doubt, just could you explain that a little bit further? I mean, <clears throat> generally, uh, generally speaking, yes, yeah, right, so generally speaking, probable cause is the standard uh, kind of being used day to day by law enforcement on whether or not to make an arrest, okay. right? That is the like, is there a probability something here happened, okay? Beyond a reasonable doubt is like, that probably happened, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that you know, and I don't have my my cow crib in front of me, but it's it's the idea that um, <clears throat> that it is more probable than than not um, that the guilt of this offense has been proven, mm -hmm. right? The question is not should or not this person be arrested, and that's that's where we're at now. Mm -hmm. It was was there enough for this these charges to be brought? Mm -hmm. 
but the highest standard beyond a reasonable doubt, um, that's, that's far off. That's so far from where we're at now. But because we hear jury, we hear grand jury, trial jury, there's this general sense to think, well, they must have proven this. This must have been proven beyond reasonable doubt. And, and that is not what happened. That is not what a grand jury is. A grand jury is a way to bring charges, much like how we have preliminary hearings all day, every day in the downtown courthouse. That's the same thing to get you in the same place. Okay. Um, they're, they're two wildly different things, a grand jury and a trial jury. Will you have a prelim? So, oh, I didn't know uh, if you wanted me to. Do you want me to answer that in Spanish as well? No, please. Um, no. Can you care, please, yeah. No, okay. no, we're okay. So, oh. la causa probable is el más y probablemente. It, 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 um, um, still up in the air. Alta de esos, okay? Más alta de probablemente, más alta de posiblemente. <laughs> Any sense of the timeline when you guys hope to move forward with the trial? Or is it uh, still up in the air depending on the information you guys are allowing? Yeah. It, it, you know, that's difficult considering the stage we're at right now um, as far as. Uh, what we know and need to prepare for. Um, I do know that our position, as well as our clients, is to be vindicated as soon as possible. Where do you guys stand on the gag order tomorrow and why? So, I'll, I can answer that in English and then I'll go back. So we are going to be joining in um, the request for the gag order um, for a number of reasons. Uh, we do not, we do not want more misinformation to be spread before the jury trial. Um, there has been very, very few number of cases that have had the opportunity to have a change of venue granted. Um, I believe that there was one, um, not recently, but I believe that it, it came back on the Robert Mistrail trial, I believe was, was one of them. And so in order to ensure that our jury pool here isn't tainted, Yo, um, we are going to be uh, joining on that gag order as, as well. ¿Quiere que yo decir eso en español también? Okay. So, um, nosotros uh, hay una... Uh, de, uh, and there will be no... ...del jurado. And there will be no prelim? And, uh, no, no, there won't be a prelim because that is what the grand jury accomplished. So rather than proceed to prelim, it proceeded by way of grand jury, which is fine, it's an option, but it is to think that it is somehow superior or has proven more or means more, that's inaccurate. When you guys say change of venue, could you just be a little bit more clear? What do you mean by that? So if we go back to the trial that I cited uh, earlier, um, that the case, excuse me, the incident took place here in Kern County, mm -hmm. but the attorneys um, were able to prove in court that a significant portion of the people in Kern County were aware of the case mm -hmm. and essentially argued that the jury pool would have um, would have already made up their mind had mm -hmm. they decided to stay here. Um, again, these are not granted uh, uh, often, but it is something that um, we may be able to do considering the large uh, amount of coverage that has uh, that this case has garnered. So basically it would just be arguing it in a different um, district type of thing. Right. Same trial, just in a different county. Okay. So um, in the in uh, in in el orden para cambiar el sitio um, no hay muchos casos aquí que, que eso es la que cambiar el county, pero es el mismo jurado. And to clarify, are you guys saying the DA went the grand jury route to a, uh, for political reasons? So, in, in viewing the press conference, I believe that she had indicated that um, they went the press conference rounds route for um, some reasons that may have been that may have dealt with uh, uh, scheduling purposes. Um, although that can happen, um, there is also something that you can that counsel can agree to in order to allow 
the prelim to be continuous. Um, she did state that there were a lot of high profile cases in which they have chosen to um, go by way of indictment. Um, between Mr. Hennessy and our law firm, we were thinking of a couple of our high profile cases and those ones have not gone by way of indictment. What challenges does this sort of present to you guys? You mentioned you guys have had these kinds of high profile cases, but what sort of barriers are you guys now presented with? I mean, obviously there's the change in venue, um, any other challenges that you guys are sort of facing and working through right now? I, I, I would say in comparison to other cases, and I think one of the reasons why I wanted to speak today on behalf of Mr. West is the public's response to a lot of this has made it seem like it's a done deal. Like, why would you take this case? Why would you represent this person? He was found by this jury already. And to us, that, that's, that's detrimental to a defense. That you're, you, that's like the fundamental purpose of this is um, innocent until proven guilty. And people are telling me, hey, it's a done deal. We saw it on the news. Hmm. We heard it. A jury found him guilty. They proved it to a jury hmm. already. And to us, that's the most detrimental thing. Because this has to be a jury of people ready to sit, listen, do their job, hear the evidence, make a decision. And if the whole community already thinks that's a done deal, no one's going to show up and take this seriously, then we're, we're, we've lost already. And, and that is the point today, is to just to make it clear what it is that was done and what still has to be done before you want to convict our clients. Mm -hmm. Y también cuando um, leer los comentarios de, por ejemplo, uh, YouTube or mm, he said she said them YouTubers Motherfucker YouTubers screwing this shit up. No, I'm just kidding. But she she's saying the comments from YouTube and media and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> Why do they need a trial? They're she's saying that people are saying they're already guilty. Why they need to go to trial? Gran uh, jurado ya dice que ellos son uh, culpables, y so esa es la razón que nosotros um, piensan que esta conferencia es más los importante YouTubers. para corregir las palabras, los estatuamentos de la fiscal. So they're trying to correct people, trying to come out and say they're not, they're not guilty yet. They got to go to trial. Guilty or in, I was gonna say guilty until innocent, <laughs> innocent until guilty, whatever. <laughs> I mean, if you had hit the normal way, the normal trial, would you still take the case? I'm so sorry, I didn't understand. If the they did it the normal way, that like they did, did, did a regular trial, like normal, would you guys still defend these people? Yeah. Right. There's, there's still innocent to proven guilty. No, I understand. Yeah, yeah, no, and it doesn't matter if that's a grand jury putting charges or a holding order at a prelim, I'd have still taken the case. I just want the 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 ground we're working with not for everyone to understand. That we're in the same place that they've been held to answer at a, at a, at a preliminary hearing. Sí, porque es muy raro para hacer ese tipo de audiencias. Es raro para hacer los tipo, este tipo de audiencias. Y también, like my counsel was saying, que ellos son inocentos ahora. You're saying they're innocent. Can you guys confirm if this trial, if this case is being worked by you guys pro bono? Is it that is, what's going on? It is not. So we are, um, so we are appointed through the Indigent Defense Panel. Um, that is a uh, program that is uh, run through the Kern County Bar Association, um, and so that is how we have been appointed to the case. And you guys are requesting a change of venue. I think that's something we have to discuss further and see where we're at. I think the concern is that that is where we end up and we'd like to avoid that if we could. This should stay in Kern County. It's Kern County's people. So, uh, but that being said, I think it's something that we are aware of and paying attention to. I'm in establishing sort of like the timeline that you guys are going to be working with here or even speaking to your clients as well. Were you guys able to establish when exactly the West moved to California City? I think that, so, um, I think that that's that's a little bit beyond the realm that we would like to discuss here today. We definitely do not mind talking procedure, but that's a little bit over what we wanted to discuss. Thank you. You guys also said that there was some stuff that um, 
Ms. Zimmer said um, at a press conference that was a, like, a little emotional, you know, tugging at those strings. Could you talk specifically what were the, the stuff that she said that um, really struck you as that? It's not to say that this isn't, is yeah, not, for. and is not going yeah, to for. be an emotional case. Get canceled, man. However, we did believe that there was some phrasing that was used that to a lay person implicates one thing, but to an attorney or to many attorneys implicates another. When we hear stuff like we proved to the grand jury, they were convinced, they believed, that isn't the standard in which they make their finding. And so to us, it was to more clarify that that isn't the standard. That isn't to say that the grand jury aren't humans and that they obviously can't make up their own mind. It's just that that's not the same standard in which we know the standard to be. And then one last question, just more of like a, if a person isn't, isn't a lawyer, um, a gag order. When is that implemented? What's sort of the standard that has to be met there for a judge to be like, yes, we're going to um, go forward with this? Security. I would, I would say the, the request of a gag order is relatively routine in a high-profile case. Um, I don't think there's anything out of the ordinary requesting it. I think the only thing that uh, didn't sit necessarily right with us was a press conference comes out and then they want to place a gag order. And I think to us it was like, well, we should also have our opportunity to address exactly what we've done here and how we see it differently. Sure. Um, but other than that, not talking about the case, because the reason why then, if, I think Alexia talked about this as kind of the essence here, is we want jurors who are going to sit and hear the evidence, how it's supposed to be presented, uh, let this play out. I mean, this is one of the fundamental things our society has is trial by jury, and it needs to stay pure and be what it should be, and that, that be, be 12 unbiased jurors listening to the evidence making a decision. The minute that that starts to seep into the jury pool and things change, that's what our concern is. We just want to get it now. So that's why tomorrow we would agree with the gag order. Mm -hmm. um, there is... Currently, you know, also a lawsuit that the county has placed on the West in regards for, um, are you guys sort of going to tackle that lawsuit as well? Are you guys going to represent them on that litigation as well? Or is that going to complicate this for you guys a little bit? So the, the answer to that right now would be no. I, it was my understanding that the, that the lawsuit, the civil lawsuit, is, um, is filed by the biological father. There's an, another one. So the county, the West are facing hmm. like a child support lawsuit, I believe, for the other children. Okay. So there's there's the biological one, but then there's also the one it, by the county. And you're not referring to a dependency issue? Uh, it, it is the dependency one. Yeah. Okay. Then in that case, we do not represent them in that particular matter. They actually have um, other attorneys who have also been court appointed through the indigent defense program um, who represent them in that matter. That is not to say that we. Uh, that is not to say that we aren't working together. It's just that we aren't representing them on that matter. All right, with that we're good. Okay, thank you so much. I was One last say, question. Uh, should should tomorrow's motion for the gag order should it be denied? Would that change your guys' stance, or do you think it would change your client's stance on further commenting on the details of this case? Like you mean, like sorry, public, just, in the beginning you said that this would be, at this time, the only time you plan on addressing media and questions regarding the case. Tomorrow should the gag order be denied and details come out before the trial or throughout the trial, would you guys consider readdressing media at that point? So I, I think that at this point, if the prosecution and the defense are going to be um, joining in that motion, I don't necessarily see it being denied. Um, the reality is that whether or not it is or is not denied, um, it would still be in our best interest to at least just wait until the trial. We don't want to, we don't want to use the potential motion for change of venue as a sword and a shield. We want to be able to um, articulate that, that motion if, if necessary and, and have it granted again, if necessary, not by our own doing. So um, I think that regardless if it were or were not to be granted, we would still, we would still be abiding by um, 
the silence until the end of trial. This agency you're talking about, did they come to you or did you go to them to, to take on this case? The agency. I, 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 the, indigent de, the indigent defense panel, uh, it, uh, it assigned us. I mean, we, we were available for appointment. It did, but I will note that um, we, so we are asked if we would like to take on a case, um, specifically Mr. Hennessy and I, um, and we did, we did choose to take this on. Sorry, and just to um, go back again to the change of venue question, you um, guys did say you guys have to discuss it a little bit further as well, but what would it depend on for, to motivate you guys to ask for a change of venue? There, so there are, there are specific, um, there's specific factors that we have to look into that we actually have to do research on before we could bring that motion to court. As an officer of the court, we are um, we are bound from bringing um, frivolous motions, and so we want to ensure that there is at least some basis uh, for for that. I will point out that um, as as you all have been covering this uh, case. I too have been reading everything that you folks have been producing, hmm. um, but specifically, I would direct you to that Robert Mistrell uh, case. I did read an article several years ago that um, indicated that I guess at the time of the hearing that the court was able to establish that 72 to 79 percent of the county either were aware of the case, had an opinion about that case, etc. Um, again, they are uh, these are motions that are not granted often and so um a lot of a lot of times attorneys have to go back to the cases before us to determine how something can be uh brought about i, I would think the sentiment from both of us is as pleasant as this has been we'd rather not be doing this we'd rather not be thinking about a change of venue we'd rather just getting ready for a case going before a jury and trying it i think that would be our preference i think in this one instance because of the unique circumstances that got us here we wanted to make this statement to point some things out before kind of shutting it down and, and doing it in trial like it should be done. Anything else? Thank you. Okay. Thank, you Thank you so much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Then we're going to start wrapping all this stuff up. Okay. Well, thank you guys, and y'all tricked us into answering questions. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, I guess that was interesting. Does the gag order mean, so it just means that are we still going to be able to watch the trial? Let me see what it said. I don't think it was a media thing though, right? I think from what I saw, it was just like the attorneys, law enforcement. The gag order was set prohibiting investigators and law enforcement from publicly speaking about the case. The judges usually issue the gag orders to guarantee a fair trial by preventing any information that can sway the public's opinion to reach the juries. In this case, the gag order applies to investigators, police, all court personnel, and anyone with access to case file. Um, hmm. Hey, what's up, Melissa? Thank you for the being a member for five months. Hey, Mel, chat, mods, love. <clears throat> Wills W I L L S Keisha Stevenson K E I S H. We could watch some of these clips. I haven't seen this yet. Probably gonna call it soon though. I don't want to be up too late, but this was from March first. The bio family thing. A S T E V E N S O N. And uh, Rosanna, can you remind me uh, which of the boys you're related to? Uh, I'm related to Orson, which is classic. Uh, that's I'm the bio cousin, and uh, but you know they're both my cousins. You know. Absolutely. So, you know, your lady's thoughts to what we're hearing today of Trezell West, the adoptive father of Orrin and Orson, being charged with multiple charges, but um, second degree murder. I mean, what are your thoughts? And like you were just telling me, Rosanna, your emotions you're feeling right now. Um, anger, um, sadness, confused. Why, you know, like, why would you hurt two babies? Like, it don't make no sense. And, um, 
You know, it, it's, it's a lot of emotions going on right now. Like, you know, we knew this, we, we, we felt this, but, you know, we did everything we could, spreading the awareness, keeping it out there. And we just want to thank everybody for that. And, um, you know, thank you, Keisha, for doing the shirts. And just having the awareness, that's the most important part of just this whole case is, you know, keeping it out there. Because if we did it, they would have got away with this. You know? I said and block that. Marilyn, thank you so much for the members chat. Hey Mel, thanks for your awesome work. Thank you for being a member. Appreciate that. Six months. Grateful that there is gonna be justice. And uh we just, you know, waiting for the next uh step uh, the, the what's gonna happen. And we just wanna find the babies. Now it's like where are the boys? Like what you guys do with them? That's the question. And and when did you guys really hurt these babies before you reported them missing? And and so, people, and we don't know how these charges came out, if he admitted or how it happened, but I've heard you, I've heard Keisha, I've heard many people ask, you know, just please if you know information let officers know this needs to end and so over a year this went on for you folks just had the 14th month uh, vigil um, you know talk about that this was kept and not come to the forefront for 14 months it's been a very long time you know we we knew it. We, we just kept spreading the awareness somebody was gonna come forward somebody no matter who it was somebody's conscience was gonna eat them up and and they were gonna want want to get it off their chest put it like that and and we're grateful for that but still you know we we want everybody who's involved held accountable from anybody who had had anything to do with these babies from removing them from their parents and now they're dead we want all those people held accountable so and um keisha is someone that's a mother someone that's been looking for the boys a part of this since the beginning um what, what are you thinking and feeling right now um i think i'm just boys very hurt emotional um we begin with the weight i'm gonna say angry, but I'm, a, I'm gonna say thankful also because god did it all he we just did the footwork and he did the rest so the timing you know we just thank god we just want justice i'm i'm very numb very hurt emotional tears just you know, uh, I'm already going through other stuff. So this, these are babies. So how could you not be hurt and just, I don't know. <laughs> they, they, they're they innocent. They're the victims in this. They didn't even they, have a life. They did not have a life. They didn't have a chance at this world. They didn't, uh, Trezell didn't even allow that. You know, why? As, as well as the other four children, they're two biological and two adoptive that have been what we've been told with uh, Child Protective Services since this started. And if, if they did it to these babies, no telling what they was doing to the other children. Man. You know, oh, no how telling how children they other have. children that they done had, you know, what they did to them. If you did it to these two little boys, what did you do to your own children? And what were you saying, Rosanna, of uh, as far as what you're hearing about Trezell, is he or is he not? Um, does this mean he's being arrested? Um, I, all I can say is I know that that two murder, uh, second degree murder charges, right? Yeah. Were uh, filed, and then all the other charges that followed and along falsely with falsely something. And falsely, uh, falsely reporting, I guess, the emergency uh, yeah. call, which was the day the pro uh, the biological mother. I don't rem remember too much. I think the kid, the kids were taken away because supposedly. I think when she was pregnant, she tested um, positive for uh, THC. So I think it was. Uh, uh, and then I don't know what happened after that. I, th I thought that's what the story was with the bio mother. I don't know. And I don't know about the biological father either. I'm not. That's a good question. I don't know what happened with the bio father. Uh, most likely the 21st because he reported them missing which was a lie yeah, and we all knew that from the interview so um yeah it, it's a lot you know it's a lot like i just want to thank even thank the girls behind the scenes because nobody ever really seen them right but man them <laughs> ladies are amazing like they really did their investigation and everything they came across was facts. Right, facts and we sent that over and 
whether the, the, the investigation took it serious or not, it, we look back at it now and it's facts. It's, it's all, all coming together. The pieces of the puzzle has, you know, we found the last piece. And, and that was the, the person who came forward. And the family has not been notified by law enforcement, Bakersfield no, Police yet? we haven't. Uh, we've seen it. My sister actually called and said that. Oh, I see you guys saying something about a leg injury. So I think I heard of that too. Did one of the kids have a leg injury or something? That was questionable. Broken femur also? Really? Yeah, it's like so way back. I don't remember. Uh, I actually made a video that I never released. I'm kind of glad I never released it. So I was looking at that whole situation kind of funny a little bit. That past situation. Uh You know, Trezell has been charged with two counts of uh, murder or, you know, second degree. And um, I just showed up over here. I'm here. <laughs> I, I couldn't even say nothing okay. because right now, like like, I, like Keisha said, you know, she, I lost my mom not too long ago. We just buried her this month. So Keisha sorry. lost her auntie, her favorite auntie. We're planning her funeral. Now this, yeah, like, is. like, I mean, we're numb. Like, I mean, we done cried all year or, or like past few years but all year already we've been just it's just been hard you know mm -hmm. just it's an emotional roller coaster ride and mentally like just it, it, it's exhausting over, like, overwhelming i'm sure yeah yeah and, and, very and are you ladies um like how long are you planning on staying out here and are there others coming honestly i'm uh, looking around because yeah. i'm waiting for that rv to pop up i don't because, even think they're gonna pop up over yeah they're here. not gonna be close over here they're, they're, they're out in the boondock yeah, somewhere they're not gonna come they're hiding so what they need to do is mm. get these drones out there i'm gonna help the bpd get these drones get get people with drones to help y'all you know, we've been trying to assist y'all, and, and we understand what, how, you know, you got to protect the integrity of the investigation because really everybody's a, 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 a suspect. You know what I mean? We understand that. But we're not giving up, and we will find them. And, and if we have to get our drones out there and our mm -hmm. people out there that's been doing this that's and to do. help you guys out, that's what we're going to do because we're not trying to step on the case all over the case. Well, we we're trying to help y'all get justice. You know, and get the answers that y'all need and we want to. That's it. You know, we ain't trying to do nothing else. We want the truth and we want our babies. Yeah, so bow dad soon, huh? Let me see if I can find anything on that real quick, too. Uh, the city or whatever. Uh, files lawsuit. Oh, there was another interesting article as well. The suit alleges Child Protective Services negligently and wrongfully placed Orrin and Orson with people outside of friends and family, which ended up being Trezell and Jacqueline. When it came to the West to try to adopt the children, the Petus family was not given a chance to take the kids back. The biological grandparents were not given a chance to take the kids back. Castillo, legal representative for the PETAS, says that there was some initial allegations of abuse for Orrin and Orson in 2018 when CPS took the boys from the family. He says, but he says these allegations did not involve their parents. During the dates of the supposed abuse, maybe I'll show you guys. You can kind of see a little bit on, on the screen. During the dates of the supposed abuse, the parents weren't even present, Castillo said. This is when the kids were visiting other family members. How and why CPS decided to take the kids out of, out of the custody of their biological parents based off of that is a bit of a question mark. So I don't know what really happened then. He says after the boys were taken out of the family's custody, Brenda contacted CPS multiple times, letting them know she'd be more than happy to take the boys. Castillo says CPS ignored her request. What, what better place to place them than their own biological grandparents or second best alternative, a family friend who was willing to take them or somebody who was both familiar with the boys and the boys were familiar with them as opposed to putting them 
into a constrained foster home. Uh, last month, investigators brought the boy's father for a DNA test. Their father, Charles, in early November was brought in by one of the agencies. We don't know if it was just one of multiple to essentially have dr blood drawn so that they could do a DNA matching to remains that either have been found or may have been found. They could do DNA matching to remains. Okay. The father and the family... A follow the family and the attorneys have not been able to have not been told the result of the DNA test of the remains. The lawsuit for financial compensation is for financial compensation compensation. That amount will be decided upon a Kern County jury. The law firm says the reason the lawsuit is being filed, though, is for justice and to make sure CPS does not wrongfully take children from another family. To, to be found like their bodies. We want to uh, give them a proper burial and, and, and lay them to rest the way that, that they, you know, the way that they should be laid to rest, not in no, no damn desert or wherever they did with them. You know what I mean? So we just, we just want, we want them to tell us where they're at. And the, so I was just going to ask you, you mentioning some, what, other questions that still come to mind that you still have? Bodies. Yeah, like, we want like, their bodies. We want their bodies. Yeah, I don't know about remains. I mean, I know the boys haven't been found, but this particular article remains. This was from December 22nd, 2021. So, yeah, I don't know what they were taking the DNA for. It says the father of the family and the attorneys have not been told the result of the DNA test of the remains. It doesn't elaborate what remains. Bodies. We want to find them. It? When did you do when it? Did you, when did this happen? Yeah, because when? before you reported it, because we know it didn't happen the 21st. We know that was a lie. It happened way hmm. earlier. You know what I mean? So when and, and, and why? Like, why? Was this your intentions to get them? Is that why y'all wanted them? I mean, I don't understand. They like, and, and the <laughs> thing is that they didn't, nobody really thought. Authorities were digging in the backyard recently that you know two little black babies will, will go as far as the as people following this case you know we all know that it's, it's all out there you know that's been questions asked about the babies how do you, you talking about back then how do you feel about the babies being on the news so we fought for that right you know and thank you everyone thank you all for helping us get it out there because the awareness you guys play a major role in that and 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 so you know, we just, we just, now we just gonna, we have to go. We gonna think. keep praying. Yeah. Keep going, you know, <laughs> and, and gonna we're gonna stop. be at every court date yeah. and, and, and fighting to the end. That's it. We're gonna right. fight to the end. Just keep and, and, I just want to say to everybody, just keep the prayer going. Yes. Because prayer is what did all this. Yes. Prayer and God. Amen. You know, this, 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 the whole thing. Prayer changes all things. And I've been saying it for the long, we just want justice, Lord. And I just thank God. And we're very grateful that we he ha what he have done this far. Yeah. Uh. Give it a second. That um, we're hearing from police do any right and do any of these charges that um we're hearing from police do any of these uh surprise you the the second degree murder the the willful um forget how it was mur the uh, falsely worded, like falsely. no it don't surprise yeah. me but we didn't want to believe that you know we still have the faith that they were alive yeah that's so the only thing. we kept that faith and that hope that they are alive we didn't want to we didn't even want to speak murder into the atmosphere yeah you know we wanted to keep hope and faith out there so that's why we stood on that but you know it is what it is god you know he brought it to god the light revealed the he truth. revealed it that's he, all we can man. say and thank y'all for the prayers yep. they powerful man <laughs> i'm telling y'all y'all better continue to pray okay. just from your own life yep. because man y'all see us we walk in testimonies right now of what prayer could do and to get justice for for the babies, the, the two babies at that, 
we're going to get that and um, we're going to keep fighting. You know, it's just beginning. The fight has just begun. Right. So, um, Anything else you ladies want to add or should that do it? I just want to say thank you to everybody, okay. you know, for keeping the billboards up, for spreading the awareness through shirts, uh, bill, uh, banners, flyers, your Facebook, your social, just TikTok. Social media, it's so, whatever. Thank you. The platform. You know I mean? Yes, exactly. <laughs> the thank you for letting us thank use y'all platform. platforms <laughs> to talk about the boys and spread the awareness. Thank yeah. you for everything. Like just prayers, you know, the everything. Thank y'all, you know, and, and we'll, we'll, you know. Keep praying though, because we need yes. them arrested. We, we need them pray. picked up. We yes. need him picked yes. up. Yes. Yes, and pray for our strength because, man, yeah. we're already at our weakest right now. Right. We, we dragging ourselves and, and yeah. now this. So now we really need prayer for our strength yeah. because, our, you know, just we do. We thank y'all so much. Well, thank you very much, ladies. Uh okay, that was kind of interesting. Um, Mama457 Rose, thank you so much for the super chat. Love you, Mel. Love this show. Thank you. And Marie Sin, uh, love you, Mel. Love you, too. Thank you so much. This was just super last minute tonight because I just saw the thing. I'm like, I don't know how I missed the presser. I guess they didn't say much. I guess they're trying to. <laughs> it's 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 gonna be probably a really tough trial for them. I don't. I mean, I don't know what they have. But uh, the prosecutor, the DA, she seemed very confident and very uh, aggressive and just very like you know, as far as what she was doing, the way she was handling the media. Jennifer says, and thank you for the super chat. The system is broken due to the virus. Innocent babies are dying. So sad. Um, we can take a look at this quick clip here too. Somebody was oh, somebody was saying there's an Amber Alert. Uh, who said that? Somebody. Amber Alert. Aaron. Let's see. Hmm, that's kind of weird. I know I should play this clip before going to the Amber Alert. Oh, this is weird. It's really quick, though. Let's just stop for a second. What's going on here? Somebody's texting me. I need to correct you. Uh-oh. Cancel. Uh, this... Authorities in Burnett are searching for an 11 year old girl last seen Sunday night, reportedly leaving with an unknown man in a car. The city of Burnett said an Amber Alert has been issued for Helen May Marie Pierce because of her age and the circumstances surrounding her disappearance. Burnett police said Pierce reportedly left 906 North Hill Street around 11.30 p.m. Sunday. The car she was seen getting into with an unknown man is described as gray four door vehicle. The license plate number is unknown at this time. She's described as white, four feet ten, with shoulder length brown hair, with highlights and brown eyes, weighing a hundred pounds. She was last seen wearing a white shirt, blue jeans, shorts, according to police. The police the city said she was reported as a runaway juvenile, but no information gathered during the investigation. Did she meet somebody online? This was happening a lot with these kids meeting people online and stuff. Uh let me play I'm gonna play this clip. These are some other, these are the, I think the parents of other, the other kids, or I don't know which kids. Meantime, the kids. That's loud as hell. Okay. Case of, meantime, the case of Oren and Orson West has prompted the birth mother of two unrelated children in Kern County's foster care system to step forward with concerns of her. Okay. I'm going to read what this person sent me after we watch this video own 17's robert price spoke to the parents of two other boys who they say are lost in the system with the adoptive parents of young oren and orson west now accused of their murder another set of parents whose children were put in the care of the same people are asking what about their sons virginia williams says she has not seen her sons guillermo and el Tero para ages eight and ten for five years. And at some point, she says, they were placed in the foster care of Trizel and Jacqueline West. 
That's the couple charged Wednesday in the alleged murders of Oren and Orson, ages four and three, after more than a year of investigation that included combing the desert around the West's home in California City. By that time, DA Cynthia Zimmer says Oren and Orson had already been dead for three months, which leaves Majenia Williams in anguish. Where are her boys? She and Israel Munoz, the boy's stepfather, say Kern County Child Protective Services isn't giving them any answers. We don't know where they are. I'm asking for proof of life. Proof of life, a phrase usually associated with kidnapping. Williams says a court official told her, in confidence, that her son's initial foster care placement was with Trezell and Jacqueline West, and that scares her. Been there six years now. They were adopted all out in 2018 to the West. And then from there, I've seen and heard nothing from them. Kern County Human Services tells 17 News they can't comment on any aspect of Williams' story. Munoz says the whole system is unfair. It's breathtaking, but that's how CPS does things. CPS will come in your house, they break up families, they don't need to be broken up. Yeah. They, and then they give these kids away like they're puppies. I mean, where's, the, where's our constitutional right? Williams says the situation is part of a bigger issue, helplessness born of multi-generational incarceration. She says she was raised as a ward of the Los Angeles County court system from the age of two. She has been to prison herself, and she says one of her sons, raised largely in foster care, has developmental issues that she fears will impact his life. And the chain continues. My father and my mother went to jail for prison, yeah. for murder. And I live with my grandma. Yeah. Being that I am awarded to the court, every child that I have, by law, they have the right to take. Yeah. Because I am, I am a state baby. <clears throat> and this is the flaw that we should fix today. Because just because we are victims and, and we had no mothers, that, has, that should not hold above our head. Guillermo and Electoro Para, where are you? It's a simple question their birth mother would like an answer to. In Bakersfield. Yeah, I wonder what's up with those kids, man. Robert Price, 17 News. A footnote here, just before airtime, DHS responded to our request for a clarification. We were told that the children of wards of the court or those who were once court-supervised minors are not subject to removal from their homes without additional cause. Let me... Okay, so I want to read this message that Tawana sent me with regards to the biological mother um, of the boys so i said okay mel i need to correct you because i've been following classic and sincere case from day one classic had a broken leg however his mother was at work but they chose to put a case on her not long after she had sincere they took them away so classic and sincere are their uh, original names for anybody that doesn't know that um While Ryan, which is the mother, was completing her court-ordered classes, the judge told her she could not smoke even though she had a prescription. She had visits with her boys while they were with the monsters, and within a year, they were allowed to adopt them. They did not let her, they did not let the bio, sorry, they did not let bio dad know anything. Those babies should have never been taken away from their mother, if you want to know anything about this case, I can give you facts. Roro, the female cousin who has been the spokesperson for the family since day one, is the bio dad's cousin. He is only biologically okay. He is only biologically classic dad, but all but he claims sincere also. Oh, and she said, by the way, other than the courts, no one's calling Orn and Orson. Only their birth names, classics, and. Classic and sincere, keep up the great work. All right, thank you for that information. So, yeah, it's something about that's what I, I heard. What she's saying is sounds like what I heard back then. What's up, Lindsay? How you doing? Yeah, the the marijuana thing. I've heard of that happening before. There was uh, I'm trying to think of what case was it. Samuel Olson? No, not Samuel. There was. It might have been. There was some case, and and I've heard of this happening, where they can uh, test positive, or something, and then they they can potentially lose custody of the child. Trizel and.
Jacqueline West, the adoptive parents of Orrin and Orson West, appeared in court today for the first time. Wasn't this lady something else, man, earlier today? I can't believe this, the things that this woman did. Wow, surprise that video. Yeah, um, isn't it really expensive to adopt children? What exactly did this guy do for a profession? I don't know. I, there's people that adopt children and make a hustle. Roro, I, I have seen her from the beginning on this whole case too. I, she's not somebody that just came randomly out of nowhere. Like she's been, I've seen, I've always seen her around. Mm, they gave the bio parents incorrect court date about the adopt court date. That's bonus. Um, let me see. I guess I guess that's it for now. I was thinking of what um, can't remember his name. Tell me about this UFC fighter. We'll see. We'll see what we cover tomorrow. I just kind of wanted to touch on that a little bit, just to see what was going on, what the uh, defense had to say. Right, Roro's the relative. Relative. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Second degree. We don't we don't know exactly what they have. That prosecutor is very, you know. The pros, the UFC fighter. Is there something we could watch real quick to see what happened? Is there a video? I'm, I keep hearing about that story. People are like, you got to go check it out. Yeah, I know Momo's related to them. I mean, uh, Roro said Momo. <laughs> Momo. Ooh, crab chips with the new air fryer. Nice. I made a chicken tonight. It came out really good. I think I overcooked it just a little bit, but it was delicious. Super easy. Free cane. So what happened with the, the UFC thing? Or should we just do that in a separate video? Cane Velasquez. So he took matters into his own hands. Vig vigilantism. Maybe we should leave for for an actual a separate video. <clears throat> I'm telling you, you guys get the air fryer. If you've never tried it, it it's amazing. And it's super easy to do. Shot a dude that was touching his kid. Oh, wow. Let me see if I can find a little news clip. We could touch on it a bit. Just to, just to kind of, for people that are wondering what's going on, you know. Uh, wow. Apparently, there's a video of it, too. This is a careless in the Joe in the background. And not play, let me see. Dubious circumstances, how I got the call. So my very, very unfortunate. Daniel Cormier. Daniel's mom passed away. And yeah. Very, very, very unfortunate. You know, very and this is... This is such a crazy week because the Cain Velasquez story just came out and we were having that conversation and, you know... Fuck, man. I that's mean, a heavy one. That's the heaviest. His four-year-old daughter was allegedly molested by this guy, and you could only imagine the rage, the fucking rage that must have been going through that man's mind. I mm. mean, I, I get it. Apparently, yeah. it was a hundred times. 
I don't know how they know that, but that's what's circulating. Times. And it, as you say, one time, when you hear that, that this yeah. potential has been going on for God knows how long. Yeah. And he's got a little daughter, man. She's four. She's oh. a tiny, yeah. little, cute, little, adorable girl. And that's. It's just. <sighs> And what does that do to her head to have that happen a hundred times? How do you, you can't erase those memories. It's I, so sick. See, yeah, I mean, it's beyond sick. It's, it's beyond so, sick. That, that guy deserves everything what Kane did. Well, Kane actually got his father, didn't he? So yeah, not the he actual you, unfortunately. Guy himself, yeah, sadly. I mean, I, my only wish is that he did it with his hands. My mm. only wish is that he just ran that car off the road, pulled that guy out of the fucking car, and beat him to death. Fuck you. And even that would have been too good for him. Yes. It would yes. have been. You know? It would have been. Yeah. I mean, that is that is a sickness. There's like there's certain sicknesses that people have that human beings have. Sicknesses of the mind. But that one, the molesting ba like a fucking baby. That's a <laughs> four year old's like a baby. The molesting children is the sickest of all of those sicknesses. And he's never gonna get better. No, I just don't think they do, man. No. <laughs> A reformed pedophile? Is I, there such a thing? I don't know. I don't know. believe so. They say the recidivism rate is way high. It's really high. Mm. What is the... See, Google that. What's the recidivism rate for child molesters? I what think, does that mean, Joe? Oh, sorry. <laughs> they removed the <laughs> GoFundMe. using these big words on wow. there. I use them wrong all the time. Recidivism, don't worry about it. What is it? Recidivism. Recidivism. Yeah. That's a new one. I've never heard oh, that. Oh, okay. I don't have the, a bad vocabulary, but, <laughs> but that's pretty good. I like that. It's. Uh, it just means you You go back to Continue. your old ways. You go back to offending. Yeah. I yeah. think it's just a legal term that they use for, Recidivism. Uh, for criminals. Yeah. It's got to be high. It's very high. high. It's it's very, be, it's I think it's very high. Has to I think be. it's like in the 90% or something like that. They shut down the GoFundMe. Not the right answer. It's uh, but again, it's but, but how how would you know that rate anyway? Because it's not exactly like because they catch them. Well, they catch them again. Sometimes. Yeah. That, right. Sometimes you they know don't what catch I'm saying. Yeah. That's that, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. They're not exactly forward with that information. It's just a sickness that's been going on for for since the beginning of time. What is you got? You got something I, I here? I found a couple of different things. This might be the best answer there. On the top of that, oh, it's to say like sex offenders though. So mm. the only thing sex I could offenders find could be rape. It could yeah. be anything. Uh, I know a guy who got charged <clears throat> with a sex offense crime because he was taking a leak outside. Oh really? Yeah, he's taking a piss outside. That's crazy. Let's take a look at this clip. So there's this UFC fighter, right? His name is Cain Velasquez, and apparently his daughter was being molested. Four year old daughter. Um, prosecutors say Velasquez targeted a man suspected of molesting his four-year-old relative. Oh, wait, his his at a family daycare. The fact that Keen is locked up in his daughter's abuse, just walking around for what? Confused. Let's listen to this. Shows what appears to be MMA legend Cain Velasquez chasing after the man he allegedly shot. You can see the black SUV chasing that truck. Inside the truck was a man accused of molesting a family member of Velasquez. Now, Velasquez is facing attempted murder charges, and he made his first court appearance today. Here's NBC Bay Area's Robert Honda. Supporters of UFC star Cain Velasquez crowded in and around the Santa Clara County Courthouse to cheer him on as he gets ready to fight an attempted murder charge, as uh -huh. NBC Bay Area first reported yesterday. So the guy survived. He didn't even die. The guy survives. It was an attempted murder. The mixed martial arts star was in court today to be formally charged for shooting into an occupied vehicle in South San Jose near Morgan Hill uh. on Monday. This is exclusive video captured on a cell phone camera showing what appears to be Velasquez chasing after the vehicle, which seems to show bullet holes and dents on it. According to court documents, Velasquez rammed the vehicle with his own truck, then while driving, fired a gun aiming at this man. Harry Gallard, who was out on bail after being... 
Looking like a weirdo, too. Charged with molesting a young child at a San Martin daycare center. The documents confirm the child is a, quote, close relative of Velasquez. Gallart's stepdad was ultimately shot in the arm and treated for a non-life-threatening injury. Gallart's sister, who was also in the vehicle, identified Velasquez as the gunman. He was later spotted by police and arrested without incident. And it's unfortunate that he took the case into his own hands rather than waiting on the criminal justice system in court documents investigate yeah look how that's been working out right waiting on the criminal justice i mean i'm not saying i'm just i mean who's to say what what anybody would do if it's their daughter or family member four-year-old but look look how waiting on the system is has been working out and waiting on cps and also the bs right to say Velasquez followed Gallart and his family from their home before the alleged attack. Police recovered a legally registered 40 caliber semi-automatic handgun in Velasquez's truck that had been fired three times. Multiple bullet casings were also found at the scene. In court, Velasquez, yeah. through his attorney, denied all allegations. His supporters say they plan to be a constant presence during any legal proceedings. It's all about let's right now focus on getting him out on bail. That's what our focus is right now for him and his family. Robert Honda, NBC Bay Area News. The arraignment was put off until Monday. At that time, Velasquez. That's crazy, man. The only thing with uh, vigilante justice, though, uh, out and I was talking to somebody the other day about this. There, I don't know if you guys remember, there was that story where the guy claimed, like, oh, his daughter was being sex trafficked and all this stuff. And so the guy goes and kills this guy. And so he was being held as a hero. And then like the other day or a week ago, two weeks ago, I'm randomly looking on a live stream because somebody told me, oh, did you see this story? And I look and find out that they're saying this guy just made up the story. His daughter wasn't being trafficked. And the guy he killed was like handicapped. Like he had some sort of a handicap. I don't know if it was a mental thing or like he was disabled. And he just, they're saying he made up some crap just to go kill somebody. But apparently people don't care about the truth. And the, the media just ran with this guy being some sort of hero. Um, not comparing or saying that with this guy, but that's just saying with the vigilante thing, you know. But, uh, yeah, man, that's crazy. And a hundred times how, and it's a, it's a family daycare. I don't trust nobody, man. Family daycare. And so what I saw too, what I wanted to show you guys real quick is that apparently the judge is afraid or something. They just posted this an hour ago. They would afraid that the I guess they're gonna come after him <laughs> saying that uh let's see judge involved in Cain Velasquez attempted murder case seeks protection sources this might be an interesting case to follow too Tonight on the Cain Velasquez case, tonight we've learned one of the judges might be concerned about safety and extra security has been provided for that judge NBC Barry's Damien Trujillo that dad pimping his daughter, selling her photos. Is that what he did? Or is that the same case, Jazz? Or something else? Is that what that guy did? Well, oh, it's a different story. It's in San Jose with a story you'll see only on NBC Bay Area. Judicial protection is nothing new in Santa Clara County, but it does not happen frequently. Certainly, the Cain Velasquez case has stirred up a lot of emotions. Supporters of Cain Velasquez have been a constant sight anytime the former UFC champion is in court. All have been peaceful so far, but what's been clear is their disagreement with rulings by judges to keep the MMA star in jail. With That's the same one? No. No freaking way. So the dad himself was the one doing that stuff. We might have to look at that story one day too. That's that's crazy. And and they were saying the guy he killed was like disabled. The family was really upset with the media and everybody. They just ran with this guy being some sort of hero. With no bail, while releasing the man, he was reportedly. Told 
And so the and this is how society is these days. The people that are molesting kids doing all this sick weird shit, and he's out. I mean, I guess that's gonna have to be handled separately, like in a trial for the, for the baby. Wow. In jail with no bail while releasing the man he was reportedly targeting, accused child molester Harry Goulart on his own recognizance with no bail. It's all about let's right now focus on getting him out on bail. That's what our focus is right now for him and his family. Alaska's his attorney, Mark Garagos, added his voice to the crowd yesterday. 40 years of doing this, I can't believe that this is what the criminal justice system thinks is the right outcome. Add to that the sometimes threatening comments on my Twitter feed and other platforms. Now sources tell me one of the judges has asked for some protection. No, I'm not surprised at all. I mean, Mark Garcia provides executive career. security <laughs> for clients and is a retired sheriff's lieutenant. He says security for a judge in this case might range from extra patrols around their home to round-the-clock armed guards. You look at each and every uh, case and you do a threat assessment and you come up with the ideas and the tools necessary to provide them safety. It's not clear if the sheriff's office has activated its judicial protection unit for the Velasquez case. And in a statement, San Jose Police Department would only say, quote, we are monitoring the situation and are aware. Garcia says in past high-profile cases, protection was even given to prosecutors and that judges sometimes obtain concealed gun permits for gang crime cases. And those kind of comments, all of them should be taken seriously. High tension for a case that might not resolve itself for months, if not years. Damien Trujillo, NBC Bay Area. Wow, that's crazy, man. Uh, that could be something interesting for us to follow, I don't know. I had a couple people telling me, you know, we're going to keep the Ethan thing in sight for when that comes up. Oh, on Discord, started a, a section there for people to put the trial dates for different cases. You can put it all in one area. So we're going to do that. But this is something that might be worth following this story. Let me check here to see. That's freaking horrible. Mm, that's why the law says that's why Joe Rogan said, I wish he would have did it with his hands, beat him to death. If I would have said something like that, they would have shut the video down. How would I going to strike? Inciting violence. Hey, Laura, how you doing? Emily, Sicily, New York, what's up? Anne Marie, Lucas, Panda. That's pretty crazy, man. It's, uh, I see why people were telling me about that now. Hmm. You can't trust nobody, man. Even family. You gotta be careful with family, friends, people in your house and shit. Bunch of weird people, man. Uh, a lot of people are saying free cane. Mm. All right. Well, I guess I'm not going to push too further so I can wake up early. But I appreciate you guys joining me for the late night, late stream. The rush in Russia, men aren't allowed in the delivery rooms due to potential kidnappings. Really? Men are allowed in the delivery rooms. All right. So you guys have a good night. Thank you so much for joining. Please hit the like on the way out. We'll see what tomorrow brings. We'll see what tomorrow brings. I want to try to crank up 
some of the content videos, even if it's just hanging out. But I, I want to start doing some pre-recorded too. We'll see. We'll see what we can get done. <laughs> yeah, enjoy the crab chips. Is that actually crab crab chips? That sounds kind of good, yo. Crab chips. I gotta look that up. Yeah, there's a lot of craziness going on out there, man. Better just to go out, go wherever you're going, and come straight home, A to B. I love you too. Thank you. All right, you guys have a good night. Peace. Take care. Adios. Seriously.